Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Before we proceed with the rest of the program, please evaluate the event using the link flashed on your screens. Your certificates of participation will only be given once the evaluation is accomplished. This year's National Science and Technology Fair would not be possible without our generous sponsors. So we dedicate the next session to getting to know them better through the Sponsors Hour. The NSTF was supported by the United States Agency for International Development, or the USAID, which is an independent agency of the United States federal government that is primarily responsible for administering civilian foreign aid and development assistance. With us today are Ms. Patricia Isabel Salvanera, Communications Manager of the USAID Energy Secure Philippines, or ESP activity, Ms. Armida Elaine Prinos, Instructional Delivery and Materials Advisor Recording of in the progress. USAID, Advancing Basic Education in the Philippines, or ABC Plus Project. Ms. Adrian Luis Cacho, Convergence Specialist of the USAID Science, Technology, Research, and Innovation for Development, or STRIDE Program. And Mr. Archie Velasco, Fab Labs PH Network Growth Chair of the STRIDE Program. The Chiefs of Party are also present in this session. We have Ms. Devina Chinkuanko of the USAID ESP Activity, Ms. Ina Aquino of the USAID ABC Plus Project, and Mr. Richard Abendan of the USAID Stride Program. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the representatives of the USAID. Good afternoon, students and NSTF participants. This is Patricia Salvanera, Communications Manager for USAID Energy Secure Philippines Activity. And together with me are my colleagues Elaine Trinos from USAID Advancing Basic Education in the Philippines and Adi Cacho from Science, Technology, Research and Innovation for Development Program, who will talk about USAID's current activities both in the energy and education sector. USAID ESP is a five-year activity that is committed to contribute enhanced security and reliability of the country's unified power system. We are working on six major pillars, such as energy security, energy resilience, cybersecurity, technology innovations, private sector engagements, and competition in the power sector. ESP will also allocate 360 million pesos for its grants under contract mechanism. Known as the Energy Evolution Challenge, our grants component intends to support research, capacity building, policy advocacy or public outreach, and technological innovations that could address key challenges in the energy sector. Here is a three-minute video to know more about our activity. USAID's newest energy program, the Energy Secure Philippines, 
aims to enhance energy security and reliability of an envisioned unified power system. To achieve these goals, the 34 million US dollar USAID ESP activity will contribute 500 additional megawatts in generation capacity and mobilize private investments equivalent to 750 million US dollars. ESP includes a grants mechanism amounting to 7.5 million US dollars to effectively implement the activity. While ESP has a national geographic focus, it will also work with selected cities under the city's development initiatives such as Batangas, Tagbilaran, and General Santos. ESP will also work with different special economic zones in Subic, Clark, and Cavite. ESP activity is implemented by a consortium led by RTI International with support from subcontractors Wise Energy, Full Advantage Philippines Incorporated, Penwood Corporation, the Philippine League of Local Environment and Natural Resources Officers Incorporated, Chessy Internex, and Vital LLC. The ESP activity builds upon USAID's strong partnership with the Department of Energy and Energy Regulatory Commission, as well as with different local government units through various technical assistance efforts in paving the way for the country's journey to self-reliance. This five-year flagship energy program is anchored on six major pillars. Energy Security ESP will introduce methodologies and support policies to improve the operations of power utilities to secure energy resources in the country. Energy Resilience The Philippines remains vulnerable from climate change effects. In addition, the recent COVID-19 pandemic underscored the need to strengthen resilience planning. ESP activity will promote risk vulnerability assessments to support the country's energy systems against natural disasters and crises. ESP will also focus on developing cybersecurity assessment framework and institute international standards to counter cybersecurity threats across the country's power grid. With the help of a customized capacity building program, ESP will equip energy stakeholders with skills to utilize new and emerging technology innovations for sustained private sector engagement. Finally, ESP will enhance competition in the power sector by supporting the government's trust and exercise the power of choice under the expanded coverage of retail competition and open access. Together with the government of the Philippines, the private sector, and various stakeholders, USAID, through its ESP activity, is committed to build an enhanced, reliable, and secure power grid gearing towards an energy-secure Philippines. Thank you very much for listening, and now I'll turn over the floor to my colleague Elaine to discuss USAID's projects in the basic education sector. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Good day to all. I'm Elaine, and I'm here to talk about the USAID Advancing Basic Education in the Philippines Project, or ABC+. ABC Plus is an early grade learning project in partnership of USAID and the Department of Education, implemented by RTI International through close collaboration with the Asia Foundation, SIL LEAD, and Florida State University. ABC Plus is also implemented in cooperation with the Ministry of Basic, Higher, and Technical Education for activities related to Maguindanao. As a project, our goal is to contribute to DepEd's efforts in improving learning outcomes in the early grades, especially in the areas of literacy, numeracy, and social and emotional learning in our target areas Region 5, Bicol Region, Region 6, Western Visayas Region, and Maguindanao in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or BARM. ABC Plus is pursuing this goal through our three core programs. Our first focus is on instructional delivery in support of teachers and school leaders. Second, materials development for K-3 learners. And lastly, system strengthening to sustain educational reform and gains. We pivoted alongside DEPED to support them in implementing their learning continuity plan, especially at the early grades level, journeying with them looking for solutions amid the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. In terms of contributing to science education in the context of early grade learning, our focused work in producing quality reading materials serves as our main entry point. 
we at ABC Plus develop supplementary reading materials designed to help children from kinder to grade 3 learn to read by building their reading skills in their mother tongue as well as in Filipino and English. Our main goal is for these K-3 children to foster a genuine love for reading, which will then increase their ability to read and learn. Adherent to Deped Order 21, Series of 2019, we co-created three kinds of reading materials with Deped teacher writers, illustrators, and editors. And these are the following book types. Wordless picture books. These are picture books that tell a story without the need for text. Here, young readers organize the pictures based on their own ideas and they create the story, including the dialogues through their rich imagination, thus building their oral language skills. Next are decodable books. These are sets of language-specific books for grade one that aims to help learners to decode words in their mother tongue by using common letters, sounds, and words based on their orthography or the Deped primer. And thirdly, level readers. Level readers are illustrated short story books for individual reading, matched to the learner's reading ability, often printed in black and white. This gives pupils opportunity to personalize their copy by coloring the illustrations, adding life to their daily practice of reading at home. Apart from these materials in print, we also created some titles into multimedia formats we call radio-based and TV-based instructional materials. These are developed to support reading at the early grades level, especially for households that do not have stable internet connection, and listening to the radio or watching TV is more of a way of life for the locals. These are being aired by partner radio and TV stations in target areas and are available on our ABC Plus social media channels. You can check it out in our Facebook page and YouTube channels. Just look us up, ABC Plus Learning Connects. As you can see, creating these quality reading materials is both an art and a science. As it is, it is a research-based process wherein we did participatory processes in doing the inventory, consultations, and research prior to developing the books. In this process, we also consulted DEPED to ensure that books we develop are in the right target language and levels and that our standards are kept. It is a co-creation process with DEPED teachers as writers, illustrators, and editors, as well as including the community groups and making sure that these materials fit the local context of our K-3 learners. The reading materials for K-3 can be likened to science experiments, wherein we also did some field tests of the materials we consider as prototypes to see if the books we have created really fit or work for our target readers. Here, the K-3 learners, teachers, and even parents share their feedback on how they have interacted with the books, if the text is right, or if the illustrators or the illustrations match the text, and then we refine based on these feedback. The development of these books really undergo a careful book creation process that goes through quality assurance with DepEd before it goes to print and distribution at scale. As the variety of themes and story titles widen the K-3 children's horizon for discovery, they also build comprehension and critical thinking, increasing the amounts of mental energy that they can devote to understanding complex ideas and subjects such as science. The themes of the materials that we have are based on DepEd's most essential learning competencies, or the MELCs. And of course, science-based themes are included in their reading experiences, as shown here highlighted in red. Why did we embed science-themed books? Based on the inventory, most of the DepEd K-3 materials focus on children's immediate social environment, including family, school, pets, and of course, values. And we wanted to make sure that there is a variety of themes, especially in the early grades, that can complement the curriculum, approaching it in a more holistic manner as reading cuts across different learning areas. Thus, the themes on food, nature, animals, the environment, and disaster preparedness are just some of them. And in addition, we also have developed books in a genre presented in narrative form with informational concepts about science. To date, 
ABC Plus was able to distribute 3.92 million copies of SRMs or supplementary reading materials from the 607 titles in the mother tongue such as Hiligaynon, Central Bicol, Tagalog, and Sinigbuanong Binisaya. We have also aired 32 different materials via TV and radio-based instruction. And for this upcoming school year, we will be producing 2,598 titles to be distributed to more than 500,000 K-3 students. USAID is also going to distribute laptops and tablets to selected schools in our focus areas with our materials so that the students can have the interactive and accelerated learning experience of listening to the words as they learn to read and understand the materials that they are interacting with. In ABC+, Plus, we believe that reading is an important skill that must be developed well in the earliest possible time. Without reading and comprehension skills, children will struggle to grow academically. As reading is the foundation to all academic subjects such as history, mathematics, and science. Reading is not only a skill that we can use in school. In fact, reading is a skill that we carry for life. So indeed, Quality education at the early grade level is critical as it is fundamental, and we must find ways to support it. Thank you for listening. And for now, to talk about science, technology, research, and innovation, let us all welcome Ms. Adrienne Cacho, the Convergence Specialist for the USAID Stride Program. Again, thank you very much. The Science, Technology, Research, and Innovation for Development, or STRIDE program, is a project of the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, to support the Philippines' path towards innovation-led inclusive growth. Since 2013, it has been working closely with the Philippine government, academic institutions, and industries to strengthen the country's capacity for science, technology, and innovation. As a higher education project of USAID, STRIDE has been supporting universities throughout the country in building strong mechanisms and programs that allow more innovation partnerships with industries while also benefiting its students through relevant curriculum, interesting research opportunities, and enhanced student career outcomes. Now let's explore some of these programs. Developing university career centers is one of the long-time initiatives of STRIDE. This aims to strengthen the ability of higher education institutions to mold Filipino talent and equip students with the knowledge and competencies required by a rising, innovation-centered employment market. STRIDE partnered with Florida State University and the William Davidson Institute at the University of Michigan to support Philippine universities in setting up their own career centers. The role of career offices has transformed from traditional counseling and advising functions to becoming institutions that develop holistic approaches that help students acquire professional skills and meet the needs of industries in an ever-changing work environment. Strategies include integrating career-related programs into the academic curriculum, refocusing skills of career office staff towards cultivating students' abilities, and establishing important connections between students, alumni, and employers. On the onset of the pandemic, career centers have shifted to virtual delivery of services to be able to reach its students remotely. Since 2014, 27 career centers have been established in universities, colleges, and campuses all over the Philippines. Six in the National Capital Region, eight in the rest of the Luzon Region, three in the Visayas Region, and ten in the Mindanao Region. From among the pioneer cohort of trainees, Five universities were recognized as model career centers for exemplifying best practices and engaging industry in career development while also helping other HEIs grow their own career centers. STRIDE has provided support for better career development opportunities to more than 222,000 students, with employment rates seeing significant improvements since the creation of their centers. Moreover, 
these partner universities have engaged with around 3,000 companies and private sector partners not only to ensure employment for graduating students, but to establish new partnerships between universities and industry partners. Now let's see a video created by one of Stride's Career Center that describes their services. Welcome to the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. And this is the Career Center. I am Marvin. Let me show you around. The Career Center is a client-friendly environment that provides services like career advising. By guiding students to speak with their professional career advisors, they will be able to understand, be guided, and make good decisions on their chosen program. They can also take career assessment, which will evaluate their personalities, skills, and interests that will match their chosen future occupation. It provides mock job interview to prepare students when prospect employer will contact them for hiring. The Career Center also conducts orientation seminars with emphasis in work ethics, effectivity and productivity in the workplace, safety measure, and career pathing to equip and prepare graduating students for their on-the-job training. The Center has an e-career portfolio, which is a database of students' updated resumes and application letters. This is the convenient access for employers to directly hire graduates to avail the professional job vacancies in the market. Aside from that, the Center provides assistance in the search of job opportunities and internships through Keeping track of your colleagues in Batchmetrin College, we made it easy with a data track for the alumni networking program. The USTP Career Center, Realizing Career Goals. A mismatch between the skills acquired by young Filipinos through their college education and the expectations from their prospective employers hampers their potential for employment and career advancement. Industry leaders have repeatedly emphasized how much effort and resources they have to spend to train graduates while also requiring soft skills such as communications and leadership skills from their employees. The offering of the Professional Science Master's or PSM degree programs aims to address this industry-driven demand. STRIDE assists in the development of PSM programs in Philippine HEIs that train young Filipinos both in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics coursework in building business management skills that are highly valued by employers. The PSM began in 1997 at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and is characterized by combining advanced study in science or engineering, business and management courses, and experiential learning to prepare graduates for future leadership and entrepreneurial roles. Local universities are trained on the academic program development processes from developing curricula course delivery, student training and internships, implementing real-world capstone projects, and monitoring of students' learning process. STRIDE also works with these universities in gathering best practices in delivering PSM programs, brokering immersion opportunities of faculty in operations of industry partners, and engaging PSM graduates and professors from U.S. universities. 
There are currently 15 PSM programs in various stages of development that are becoming sustainable with the strong support of the industry. Several PSM programs currently being offered are focused on emerging industries in the Philippines, such as renewable energy, data science, cybersecurity, construction, and food manufacturing. STRIDE is also providing support to the Philippine government's Regional Inclusive Innovation Centers, or RRICs, an initiative with the Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Science and Technology. These RRICs enable the collaboration of the different actors in the local innovation space, leading to highly coordinated innovation ecosystems that deliver tangible impacts to regional economic development. The RRICs aim to bridge the gap between industries and academe through the application of research and development initiatives to building industries and startups in the regions. The RRIC has been piloted in four areas, Bicol, Cebu, Cagayan de Oro, and Davao, and now expanding to four more sites, Regions 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9. Through these sites, more and more HEIs are helping small businesses harness innovation in order to become more competitive and successful. STRIDE is dedicated towards strengthening innovation facilities, in particular, the fabrication laboratories or fab labs that are present in many HEIs in the country. These facilities provide various equipment such as 3D printers that allow students and innovators in the community to create prototypes of new products that they can conceive. In the past couple of years, STRIDE has worked with personnel from these facilities to provide more value-adding services to students, local industries, and startups. Last December 2020, a network of 23 founding institutions has been officially launched, thereafter referred to as Fablets Philippines. STRIDE, together with our partners from the government, has worked with personnel from these facilities in designing a structured and forward-looking capacity development program to provide more value-adding services to the local industry. One of the key activities under this is the Makerspace Management Academy, a training program that aims to continuously enhance the technical and industry engagement capabilities of fab labs in the country. Fab lab laboratories, by their reason of existence, are paving way for creative minds to realize ideas and designs to actual prototypes and products. We launched a joint effort that celebrates the partnership of the U.S. and the Philippines to further elevate this effort to another level. Through the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, and its Science, Technology, Research, and Innovation for Development, or STRI program, Makerspace Management Academy aims to improve the competency of fab lab personnel to fulfill their roles in the fab lab on the areas of prototyping, designing, product development, patent registration, research, and event management of facilities. The program is tailor-fitted to address the gaps and concerns aired out by participating fab labs. Since then, these facilities have been implementing activities to help their universities to become more innovative. Here are some of the activities and products in the different fabrication laboratories in the Philippines. Digital Fabrication Crash Course Participants were SHS STEM educators and MSMEs who want to utilize 3D printing and laser machine for research, teaching, and upgrading their products. Extrude 3D Printing Webinar Series 3D printing or additive manufacturing allows users to create complex three-dimensional objects from a 3D digital file. It can be used in various areas such as jewelry, art, food, fashion, and even medical equipment. 3D Printing Vertical Axis Wind Turbine Design Designed by student makers of Tagbilaran Science High School, the wind turbine is attached to a generator that could produce electricity. It is further connected to an Arduino system that could measure and log the amount of electricity produced. 
Initial experiments on the turbine show great potential for more efficient production of electrical energy. We hope these examples give you a glimpse of some of the activities the Stripe Project does in building stronger innovation programs and services at Philippine HEIs. It is intended that these efforts will create a supportive environment for the students in K-12 today that aspire to become the scientists and engineers of the future who will continue to deliver the benefits of research and innovations to every Filipino. Thank you very much to the USAID for serving as one of the major sponsors to the NSTF. Indeed, this endeavor would not have been conducted as successfully if not for your help and assistance. Up next is another major sponsor, the Gokongwei Brothers Foundation. With us today to talk about GBF is its executive director, Ms. Grace Colette. Ms. Grace is responsible for program development, staff management, and community and partner relations on top of supervising the Family Foundation's daily operations with the overall mission of building the future through education. Dear participants, please help me welcome once again, Ms. Grace Colette. Good afternoon, everyone. It is such a privilege to come and talk to you today. Kami po ay taus-pusong nagpapasalamat sa DepEd for the opportunity to support NSTF. This is our third year to sponsor this event, and I'd like to share with you why we are doing so. It's because of this story. It started with peanuts. There was once a boy, the eldest child in his family. He had four brothers and a sister. They lived in a big house with a garden in Cebu. Their father owned a chain of movie theaters in the city, which allowed this young boy to enjoy movies for free. But when their father passed away, the life they had known changed drastically. The family didn't have enough money to pay the debts. Their father owed a lot of people. As a result, their chain of movie theaters was taken away, their big house with a garden too. The boy was only 13, but he knew he had to grow up fast, take charge, and help his mother to put their lives back on track. The young boy now had to learn to become a man. His mother sold all of her jewelry to generate funds. She also sent the young man's siblings to China, a tough decision she had to make because their relatives could better afford to take care of them over there than she could in Cebu. Money was scarce, but the young man, the young boy, and his mother made do. They sold fresh, hot peanuts and garlic. It was wartime, but that didn't stop the budding businessman from pursuing this new path and expanding the products he and his mother's mother were selling. He would wake up extra early and bike his way to the public market every morning. He would then set up a small table to sell a spool of spools of thread, bars of soap, sticks of candles, 
side by side with much senior and experienced vendors, but that didn't intimidate him. He earned about 20 pesos a day from his makeshift business. When the young man heard there were greater business opportunities in Manila, the aspiring businessman made his way to the capital to sell his wares. He rode a batel, a boat described to have the length of two cars put together. This made traveling by sea quite tiresome and very slow. On a windless day, it would take two weeks to make it to Manila. If not, the boat would make a five-day trip to Lucena, Quezon. From there, the passengers rode the truck for the six-hour trip to the big city. Here, he made full use of his time during the long boat ride, reading books that increased his knowledge of the world around him. You see, he had to stop schooling to help out his family. Oh, but he never stopped learning. From then on, education, whether in the form of books, school, or life, would become his lifelong advocacy. And later on, while he himself did not finish his own studies, when he could already afford it, he sent his youngest brother to one of the best engineering schools in the world, MIT. It was not all smooth sailing, as Thomas Edison took 10,000 steps of failed experiment to reach that one lighted bulb. So was this young man's success riddled with trials. An accident during the long hours at sea gave this young man a valuable life-saving lesson he would never forget. One rough day, the boat he rode hit a huge ro rock and sunk, parang Titanic, throwing all passengers out into the open sea. They lost all their belongings, but the pile of car tires, mga gulong, that he was going to sell in Manila stayed afloat and served as lifesavers for everyone. Later, as a budding and rising businessman starting new ventures, he would be reminded of that horrible experience at sea. It kept him alert of the risk he could be taking, of the possibility of losses. At the same time that he kept, he kept his eyes open for opportunities to come out of the situation winning. Determined to start a bigger business in Manila, this man was now joined and helped by his siblings. They had returned from China to continue their studies in the Philippines, and they were old enough to lend their, bro their brother some hand around his shop after their school. Tulong, tulong po. The Second World War had also ended. He began to notice that not many people were selling things and many more people were looking for things to buy. Right then and there, a light bulb lit, lit up in his head. He and his siblings turned their apartment into a warehouse filled with sacks of onions and oranges. They bought all sorts of products from the United States, old newspapers and magazines, bits of fabric and used clothing that smelled of mothballs. The business was a success. People kept buying from their warehouse because the products they were selling were not found anywhere else. From there, he had another brainstorm. Why not make the products we sell? His idea planted the roots that would grow, flourish, and evolve as one of the largest food manufacturing companies in our country today. Sold products not even in our, in our own country, but also in neighboring countries as well. Their factory first made cornstarch, not exactly the most exciting product a fledging company would put out in the market but it was a key ingredient in many delectable offerings. Big companies bought their cornstarch for its quality and cheap price. Next, they made their own coffee brand competing with foreign brands, which became an instant success. And the rest was history. Today, those businesses are known under the conglomerate JG Summit Holdings, Inc. and has expanded from food and beverage to retail air transportation, telecommunications, banking power, property and hospitality, media and petrochemicals. You may have most likely eaten, visited, used many of our services, products like C2, Yatos, Robinson Small, Cebu Pacific, 
What this man built services millions of consumers worldwide and now employs and benefits 50,000 Filipinos to benefit also their families and more indirect businesses that grew springing from these industries. At the latter part of his life, at the latter part of his life, he claims, more than all my businesses, more than all the money I have, my family is my greatest happiness. The boy, the man in this story is our founder, Mr. John Bokumui. I share this story today because there's so much to learn from it. Like Mr. John, we all experience loss and wage our own war. We are at war with COVID-19. We are at war with joblessness and poverty. We are at war with depression hitting our youth and the temptation to hopelessness. We too are at war with the problems of education, finding ways to uplift our students' learning and improve their skills so that no one is left behind. I share this story because I believe, like Mr. John, we can win this war. We can gain from our loss. We can find opportunities uniquely hidden in them and maximize it for growth to create a better future, not just for us, but for our families and our communities. Ultimately, creating a better version of us. Seeing the value of education in life, Mr. John and his brothers established the Gokongwe Brothers Foundation in 1992 and dedicated its work to education. According to Mr. John, from the beginning, I knew that education would be the foundation's primary advocacy. Why? Because it is my belief that education is the only way to save this country. We need quality education to compete in this world. So how do we fight this war? For us at the Gokwe Brothers Foundation, we have been undergoing a major transformation. Even before the pandemic, as with the passing of Mr. John in 2019, we found ourselves transitioning to a new chairmanship under his son, Mr. Lance Gokongwe. Shortly after, the pandemic hit, and we had to stop and rethink and re-strategize for the foundation, given the ever-changing, changed education landscape. We talked with about 100 stakeholders and continue to do so to understand how we could pivot for more relevance and greater impact to STEM education. We were brought to the conclusion and resolve that one of the best way forward to impact education with the greatest ripple effect is through you, our teachers. You are the pivotal key, and we are placing our stakes for the engineering of our youth in your hands, shaping the shapers of our future. Tomorrow's scientists, tomorrow's leader. So to our dear STEM teachers, you are our frontliners. Our ambition is to benefit 10,000 educators in the next five years and impact 1 million learners. So you can just imagine, day in and day out, talagang pinagtatrabahuan namin mag-isip ng mga paraan kung paano namin kayo mas matutulungan pa through our existing programs and new initiatives. Our priority is educators' professional development. Dahil naniniwala kami na deserve nyo ang advancement sa career. And when you become masters of your subjects, mas malaki ang magiging impact sa mga learners natin. Alongside this, our other priority is content for both teachers and learners. Dahil lalo na sa panahon ngayon ng pandemic, kailangan kayo masuportahan sa pagtuturo ninyo with quality and effective teaching and learning resources. So, how are we doing this? First, we have the Teach STEM Scholarship Program. This is for both college and master's degree for those who would like to become future STEM teachers and for existing STEM, STEM teachers. GBF will provide you with financial support for the duration of your study. And you can enroll in our partner TIs na mga centers of excellence or centers of development as identified by CHED. Kaya, I would like to pause and take this opportunity 
na imbitahan po kayong mga STEM teachers na mag-apply na dito sa Master's Degree Scholarship Program ng GBF. Our deadline for application is until October 15, 2021. And we have 68 slots po na open pa para sa inyo. To apply, simply email scholarships at gbf.com.ph Ibigin ko po, scholarships at gbf.com.ph Or visit our Facebook page, search nyo lang po yung Walking Way Brothers Foundation. Second, tayo ay meron pong partnership with UP MISMED kung saan meron po silang isang community para sa mga science and math teachers. Ito po ay ang Kasama Teachers Community or science at Kamathematics. Dito po, we provide regular webinars on content-specific topics, as well as teaching and learning resources na pwede niyo po magamit sa mga online classes niyo. Ang maganda din po dito ay mag nagbibigay po ng guidance ang mga taga UP Med sa mga guro. So far, uh, we launched this last year, and we already have around 4,000 teachers strictly science and math teachers who actively participate in webinars and discussions and also share their learnings and best practices in the community. So, muli ako ay mag invite sa inyong lahat na sumali dito sa Kasama Teachers Community. To join, simply go to www.kasamateachers.ph or visit the Facebook page din po. But wait, there's more. Third, we are in the process about to start yung conceptualizing of our flagship program for educators. Yes, dahil gusto po talaga naming makatulong in an effective and significant way. As in yung may impact po talaga na pangmatagalan. So we are coming up with a major program for educators' professional development. In fact, we're working with a global consulting firm na kilala sa pag-develop ng innovative and scalable education programs. And we are using the design thinking approach, which is human-centered approach, so we can get the solutions from the stakeholders themselves, such as you po, our teachers. And on this note, we would also like to thank the STEM teachers who participated in our roundtable discussion last Wednesday. Your insights and contributions were all very substantive and will come a long way in our process of determining the most effective programs for you. So, antabayanan po natin ito at hihingin po namin ang inyong mga dasal para makabuo ng isang tunay na makabuluhang programa. To our dear students naman, from your opening videos to the entries that we have seen here in NSTF, what can I say? You are amazing. Talagang napabilib nyo kami. Another pillar of our foundation is providing access for students who are underprivileged but show excellence in their studies. Aside from investing in your teachers, we invest in you directly. We continue to strengthen and improve our scholarships. We have over 500 active scholars from our various scholarships, majority of which are from STEM courses. Today, allow me to highlight two of them. The first is STEM Scholarship for Excellence, given to deserving STEM college students from GBF Partner Centers of Excellence and selected in partnership with the Gokong Way Group Business Unit. These scholars benefit from other programs to support their education and to make them work ready for their future career in the Gokong Way Group. And second, is the GBF Young Scientist Award Scholarship. Through this program, we aim to encourage the youth to pursue excellence in STEM. Full STEM college scholarship granted to the top winners of the prestigious Philippine-based STEM competition, such as the DepEd's National Science and Technology Fair. Last year, we awarded 12, and the year before that, we actually sent 12 of our winners to the ICEF competition in Arizona, USA to compete and represent the Philippines. We want to support you, our budding young scientists, in your journey to excel and contribute to our country's development. 
And to support our scholars' journey, we have launched and we are now implementing a training program called Who Want to Serve, a GBF Leadership Journey. For five weekends, starting last Saturday, we will be training our scholars on servant leadership, discover self, growing trust, building vision, and how they may contribute to their community and the country as STEM advocates. Kasi naniniwala po kami na sa GDF na to lead is to serve. We believe that to change a nation is to change oneself first. Man in the mirror po muna. And as we do so, we effect change at the grassroots. One community at, that, at a time. So we are also enhancing our one, one community programs. One community is about helping solve the problems faced by students and educators in terms of material, learning, and scholarships and training for educators. This year, together with our business units, we are starting with five One Community for Education. Bukod po sa pagtulong sa Brigada, Eskwela, at Scholarship ng mga guro, with one of our communities, we are planning to pilot the One Kapatid Tutorial Program that aims to support the thrust of no one getting left behind. This math tutorial programs will focus on those who are having difficulty catching up with their math lessons. This will also be supported by an ecosystem of community of volunteers, teachers, and parent support training program for a holistic and sustainable approach. Finally, we are here today committed to so supporting the National Science and Technology Fair as this serves as a major annual platform for STEM, where educators come together to collaborate, discuss, and share best practices. It is our hope and dream that the NSTF will grow bigger in the years to come. Kaya nga po, um, in previous years, we, we provided videos, the ones that you are watching in between programs, because we believe that these stories are meant to be shared and meant to be told, and that it will encourage other youth to pursue STEM. And we want NSTF to be one of the driving forces in advancing STEM education in our country. And most important to NSTF, we support, aim to encourage and celebrate the excellence of our students. Kaya naman, excited kami sa magiging winners who will be announced later in a few minutes after. As a token of our recognition and support, we will be giving out 7,000 cash prize to the three student winners and 7,000 worth of donation to the schools they are enrolled in. So, we come back to the question we first asked. So how do we win this war? We humbly propose the following. We win this war first by winning the war within us. We overcome loneliness by thinking of others. It's hard to be lonely when we are thinking of how so many others need our help. We win this war winning over quitting or indifference with perseverance, fixing our eyes on the goal even when waves crash all around us, taking boldly that, ne that next step that opens up, even when sometimes we don't see what follows after that. We win this war against anxiety by preparing and taking action, action that is within our control and praying for the rest. We win this war by winning over mediocrity or cowardice, expanding beyond what we thought we could do through sacrifice and discipline doing our part more than criticizing others who fail to do theirs, giving our best, not dependent on our circumstances, but dependent on who we are as a person and challenging even our own best. We win this war by working together, seeing and leveraging on each other's strength more than complaining about weaknesses, going that extra mile to help each other. 
We win this war by choosing to hope, choosing to love, choosing to keep our faith. Please allow me to personally share what I have found as my winning formula in life. And that is to choose who is my commander in chief, whose team I am on, to choose the one who loves me, who fights for me, who even died for me, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With him, ultimately, we always win. Congratulations to DepEd, to Secretary Briones, and the Executive Committee. Congratulations to Director Andaya and team, Ms. Anna, Mr. Joseph, Ms. Burns, to the NSTF creatives and technical team for pushing through with this amidst adversity. Congratulations to our speakers, our teachers, and of course, the main people we are celebrating today, our students. Today is a win for education, a win for all of us, a win for our country. Mula po sa Gokongway Brothers Foundation, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much, Ms. Colette, for such a beautiful and inspiring message. And on behalf of the Department of Education, particularly the Bureau of Curriculum Development, we thank you for your generosity and unrelenting support to the NSTF and our young scientists. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, our sponsors for the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair. Please stay with us as we proceed to the closing ceremonies, which will commence in a few minutes. Pangarap kong maging isang successful na mechanical engineer. Pangarap ko din na masuklian yung mga nakatulong sa buhay ko. Pangarap ko pong makapagtapos ng pag-aral upang matulungan ang aking pamilya. The Gokongway Brothers Foundation was founded in 1992 from an initial endowment by uh, my father, John Gokongway, and three of his brothers. Its objective is really to support the growth of educational opportunities for Filipinos. I seem to recall in the Philippines, there's not very much foundation work here being done. I worked and studied with my family and decided to put the Kokoe Brothers Foundation by contributing shares of stock for me and my brothers to form the nucleus of the company. My father, due to various circumstances, including the Second World War and, and the earlier death of his father, he was not able to complete uh, his university. No? He's basically a high school graduate. But because of his innate curiosity and love for learning, he read a lot of uh, books, he read a lot of uh, magazines and articles. This helped him become a successful entrepreneur. He was able to pursue a master's education for himself, where he really found a lot of value in that. He saw that the difference that education made in his life, and he wanted to share that uh, opportunity with as many Filipinos as he could. Ako po si James Lembrano, 21 years old, pangalawa sa magkakapatid. Si Papa kinuha as a technician ng isang company sa Mindoro. Nagustuhan niyong pamumuhay, nagkaroon ng business, then sinama niya na kami doon. So doon na kami lumaki. First year high school ako, namatay si Papa. Heart enlargement. Ako, mindset ko noon, wala na kami yung pera. So, hindi ako makatapos ng pag-aaral. Nag-open yung GBF na mag-offer na scholarship. Si tita ko, tinanong niya ako, James, gusto mong mag-aral. Walang alinlangan na sinabi ko, sige po, gusto ko talaga mag-aral. Nag-exam ako sa scholarship. 
hanggang sa pumasa, hanggang sa nag-aral na ako. Doon na ako nagsimula mag-grow. Doon na ako nakarealize kung paano mabuhay dito sa mundo ko. The Scholar Ni Juan program is a TESDA accredited program that provides underprivileged youth with a one-year scholarship for mechatronics and instrumentation, which means that they learn how to operate machines in a factory floor. And after they pass the TESDA exam, they are offered jobs in Universal Robina Corporation. Ang trabaho ko po ngayon is production operator. As a production operator, kailangan laging secure yung makina ko ng maayos na naiwasan yung trouble. Pangalawa, kailangan yung quality ng products laging nasisecure at na hindi makakontaminate. Sobrang laki na naitulong sa akin ang trabaho dito sa Universal Robina Corporation Cavite Plants kasi nakatulong ako sa pamilya namin ng maayos. Gawa ng stable na yung trabaho ko so regular na ako dito. Our thrust for the foundation is STEM education, so science, technology, engineering, and math education. We believe that the path to progress for any nation is through industrialization, and we feel that through STEM programs, this is probably the best path forward. My name is Rosan Carmona. I'm 24 years old, and I'm the GBF, Regis Summit Petrochemical STEM Scholar. I came from a simple family living in the mountains of Lubo. Growing up in a less privileged community has not only offered financial but also academic challenges. But that helped me realize the value of education. Working here as JJ Summit Petrochemical Corporation has been a great experience. JJ Summit is providing different opportunities, tools, trainings, and resources that are all valuable for me to be equipped and ready on the task I'm assigned to. We recognize that uplifting education in the Philippines is, is not the job of one institution alone. It's, it's a partnership and our, our objective is really to work with uh, very credible and capable partners such as De La Salle for engineering and the Ateneo for management. All I wanted to do was graduate for my family. But I was studying my course, I realized that the theory had a lot of applications for my country. The Gokungui grant has helped me not only for me to be able to reach those resources financially, but it has also helped my work to be recognized. It's always been my plan to graduate with a master's degree. I want to pursue a career in applied mathematics. The GBF Next Gen Scholarship for Excellence assisted my parents financially in providing me a high-quality education. We will continue with our focus on STEM education. Hopefully, we're able to help a few thousand uh, Filipinos achieve education access that they may not have had. Gusto pong magpasalamat sa GBF STEM Scholarship for Excellence kasi po, nabigyan po ako ng gantong klaseng oportunidad. Nagbukas po sila ng pintuan upang sa gayon makapag-aral po uli ako. GBF has helped me take that first step the moment that they granted me with the Next Gen Scholarship. to empower the future through education. This is not just my legacy or the GBS legacy. This is our legacy. All right, a pleasant afternoon to everybody. We are virtually gathered once again for this special academic event spearheaded by the Department of Education through the Bureau of Curriculum Development in partnership with the Gokongwe Brothers Foundation and the United States Agency for International Development. It is literally true that education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair closing ceremony with the theme, Agham Pananaliksik at Tech
it was really evident that our four-day celebration of NSTF 2021 were filled with a lot of learnings and eye-opening discussions from the series of insightful side talks conducted by our highly distinguished resource speakers, which had holistically challenged our viewers and participants, particularly the teachers and our learners, thus allowing us to conclude that this virtual platform is currently filled with a crowd of mixed emotions, which will later be intensified due to the unleashment of winners of CNC Cola competition. To give us a message, may we call in the Director 3 of the Bureau of Curriculum Development. Please welcome Director Samuel R. Sullivan. A STEM field afternoon to all, to our leaders, to our learners, and to uh, all our teachers who are uh, virtually hooked right now in this uh, closing program. On this very day, September 3, in 1875, Ferdinand Porsche was a German car inventor who designed the Porsche and Volkswagen cars. In 1905, Carl David Anderson was an American physicist who won the 1936 Nobel Prize for Physics for his discovery of positron. And in 1938, Noyori was a Japanese chemist and a Nobel Prize winner in 2001 for the study of cheerily catalyzed hydrogenations. In these years of inventions, there were lots of challenges caused by crises and emergencies that like pandemics as well. This day, September 3, uh, 2001, 2021, we continue to celebrate the inventiveness, innovativeness, and creativity of our STEM learners, teachers, and leaders. In a special way, we shall recognize the winners of the Cien Sicula, who demonstrated excellence in various STEM fields like physical science, life science, mathematics, and engineering. As these STEM learners presented their innovations, we heard their voices as the representation of their aspirations, dreams, and goals amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, they are relentless and steadfast amid the pandemic. It can be recalled that during the International Youth Day with the theme, Youth Engagement for Global Action, they shared their positive stories of youth engagement and resilience in the UNESCO's My COVID-19 Story Campaign. The storytelling campaign was launched to serve as a platform for youth around the world to share their voices and highlight their different lived experiences during the pandemic, including their feelings, perceptions, and innovative initiatives to find solutions to the crisis. Amid the phenomenal Industry 4.0, smartphones, advanced robotics, machine learning, and artificial intelligences are in the world of the Gen Z and Gen Alpha learners. These learners shall see the transition to Industry 5.0 where collaborative robots or cobots become the characteristics of the smart society where everything is interconnected, communication, transportation, finance, agriculture, production, manufacturing, education, among others. In an activity conducted by the United Nations Development Program in December 2020, young Filipino in innovators pitched their STEM-based ideas that address issues on social protection, digital divide, and green economy during the pandemic. Like We Mind, a digital mental health platform, Unoya, an, SM an SMS-based learning platform intended to facilitate effective feedback in modular learning, COVID Plus Fun, an enterprise focused on creating interactive board games that children and youth on basic concepts and relevant information about COVID, and Team Maharlika, a team developing a device to assist in diminishing communication barriers 
with the use of assistive technologies and machine learning. Friends, through the years, fostering critical thinking is among the education agenda of the Department of Education. STEM education in particular has become one of DepEd's banner programs. As we pursue this, we consider Albert Einstein's famous relativity formula, E equals mc squared, where a mass and a speed of light squared define energy. But in the Department of Education, E equals m squared may be STEM ed leverage. We elevate E STEM through a massive M community engagement, C through C culture of research. The science and technology fair has become the vehicle of the depth ed to advance STEM ed. It has become the trademark of STEM excellence at the school level, district, division, regional science technology fair until the national science and technology fair. Many basic ed learners have concurred as well, the international level like the ISEF. The NSTF for this year, though conducted virtually, proves that we can concur challenges with the STEM knowledge and skills. We were able to engage the future of STEM in the Philippines, the children and youth, the very reason for STEM ed for all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful message. We are very grateful to have you due with us this afternoon. Indeed, in the fight of the nation, every action is important, and science education has a critical role to play in the midst of this pandemic. Now to pause for a while, let us shift our attention to an intermission number to be catered by Quezon City Teachers Dance Troupe, the Hota Kirino. Let us give them a warm round of virtual applause.
please evaluate the event using the link flash on your screens. Your certificates of participation will only be given once the evaluation is accomplished. Once again, thank you, Quezon City Teachers Dance Group, for that amazing cultural performance. At this point in time, let us now welcome the Chief of Curriculum Standards Development Division, Bureau of Curriculum Development, who will introduce to us our guest speaker this afternoon. Everyone, a big round of applause to Chief Isabel A. Victorino. Good afternoon to all our teacher and student participants. As we officially close NSTF 2021, we invited another important figure of DepEd, whose office plays a vital role in the implementation of different programs and policies. As the head of the Legal Affairs Office, she renders legal opinions to facilitate policy formulation and addresses legal concerns of DepEd on different matters, including procurement, intellectual property rights, and yes, even employee benefits and child protection. Accordingly, her office is mandated to review different contracts and agreements relative to the education programs and requirements of DepEd, evaluates and reviews investigation reports, resolutions of complaints, decisions on administrative cases, and other legal compliance documents. Her signature is most awaited as this means either problem solved, otherwise unresolved. She holds licenses both as a lawyer and as a professional teacher. As a lawyer, she was Associate Legal Counsel of the De La Salle University, Manila, and lawyer of CSIP Salazar, Hernandez, and Gatmaitan Law Offices. She became a consultant on constitutional and human rights law to retired Chief Justice Reynato Espuno and served as Court Attorney 6 in the office of Chief Justice Puno, the highest court attorney rank at the Supreme Court where she handled high level constitutional law and human rights law cases with national and jurisprudence impact. As an educator, she taught at the Ateneo de Manila University and St. Scholastica's College, Manila. With her accomplishments and achievements, one will surely not be surprised that she is where she is now. She is an embodiment of a person who consistently worked her way to the top. She graduated Bachelor of Arts, major in philosophy at the Ateneo de Manila University as cum laude and Bachelor of Laws at the University of the Philippines with Dean's Medal for Academic Excellence. She completed her Master's of Education, major in school leadership at the De La Salle University, Manila with high distinction and at the top of her class and, and obtained her Master of Laws on Public Law and Human Rights at the University College London with merit as recipient of Shivening Scholarship of the United Kingdom government. With her educational background and solid experience in her field of expertise, she was prepared for a bigger and more challenging role when she set her sight in public service and decided to devote her time with the Department of Education. Her position as Director of Legal Service of the Department in 2015, where she managed, developed, and built the capacity of the new legal service, made her fully equipped to be one of the well-regarded heads of TEPED. As it is, she is now responsible in managing all the legal concerns of the department. This afternoon, we are honored to have the Undersecretary for Legal Affairs of the Department of Education. Let's all welcome Yusek Josephine T. Maribuho. Thank you very much for that uh, very generous uh, introduction. 
I'm afraid though that the introduction might be longer than my my message. Anyway, uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Let me begin by uh, congratulating the Bureau of Curriculum Development, headed of course by our director, Joy Sandaya, and under the supervision of the Office of the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction for mounting this year's modified National Science and Technology Fair, or NSTF, amidst the challenges presented by the pandemic. We would also like to commend our regional and schools division offices, schools, and education partners in science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, for encouraging our learners to participate in this year's NSTL. Most of all, we applaud, of course, all our participants and awardees for being our models of innovation, collaboration, and creativity, and being beacons of hope amidst this global crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a long-drawn adversity that has significantly altered our lives. But within this mountain of adversity lies a gold mine of opportunities for science, research, and technology to offer solutions for us to rise above this adversity. Through science, research, and technology, countries across the globe are working together to understand the COVID-19 virus and its variants and create vaccines and treatments to win the battle against this pestilence that has beset humanity for a year and a half. Indeed, science, research, and technology bring hope to humanity by not only providing a cure to diseases, but also making life better for the human race and helping each one of us realize one's full potential as a human being. Science, research, and technology spur growth and progress. And this is aptly echoed in this year's theme of the NSTF, Agham, Pananaliksik, at Teknolohiya, Kabalikat sa Matatag at Maunlad na Pamayanan. We are in a pandemic, not a paralysis. We have only one life to live, and our lives must continue despite the pandemic. Thus, with strong resolve and unrelenting hard work, the Department of Education, thought out of the box, adopted and implemented the basic Education Learning Continuity Plan, or BELCP, for children and the youth to continue enjoying their right to quality education even in the home and not only in a traditional school building. We have used not only printed learning resources, but also technology to deliver basic education through radio, television, and online and offline digital learning. The BELCP guides us to continue developing K-12 learners and help them reach their full potential as human beings and as productive and responsible citizens of the country and the world. While the pandemic has locked us up in our homes, and hidden our faces behind face masks and face shields, our minds and spirit should not be imprisoned by these physical barriers. We should continue to let our minds and spirit wander and wander to discover solutions to the difficulties and problems of everyday life through research, science, and technology. We draw inspiration from students like Evan Tongol, 
Shaira Gozun and Neil Kayanan from Angeles City Science High School, who showed us how our K-12 education can transform the community and our country. After winning the best team research in physical science in the 2019 NSTF, they represented the country in the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in Phoenix, Arizona, where they were awarded with an honorable mention by the Acoustic Society of America. Their innovation, coat, hibla, an alternative sound absorption material, close coat, consists of acoustic panels made with abaca, bamboo, and water hyacinth fibers that took inspiration from two problems they faced in their community. Excessive noise penetrating walls in their classrooms and heavy floods due to overabundance of water hyacinth. With their innovation, they are contributing not only to the transformation of their community, but also to the advancement of STEM in our country. Efforts were undertaken by their school with the Department of Science and Technology for the patenting and further development of their invention. Indeed, it is important for one's innovation or intellectual property to be protected, but this protection is coupled with a social responsibility and commitment to the common good inscribed in the highest law of the land, the 1987 Philippine Constitution. It states that, open quote, the use of property bears a social function and all economic agents shall contribute to the common good, close quote. Consistently, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines provides that, open quote, the state shall promote the diffusion of knowledge and information for the promotion of national development and progress and the common good. With the breakthroughs of science, research, technology, intellectual property, innovation, and social responsibility. We shall overcome the COVID-19 pandemic that has befallen humanity. Many scourges and pestilence have visited the world throughout history, but, but we continue to be inhabitants of our planet. The challenge for you the youth of today is to pursue new knowledge, critical thinking, advanced products, solutions, and innovations. The challenge for us adults is to commit to providing a learning environment that fosters creativity and innovation. If we heed these calls, our community, our country, the human race, and the world can continue to flourish. And hopefully, we can leave this world a better place than when we found it. Again, congratulations to all our participants and awardees. May we all blaze a trail of excellence and innovation for our country and the world. Maraming salamat po at muli magandang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you, Attorney Josephine, Under Secretary for Legal Affairs, for that very stimulating message. Truly, now that the education system has shifted dramatically to remote learning, the mission still remains. It is to overcome the learning crisis respond to the pandemic we are all facing and no student shall be left, left behind. At this juncture, we will now award the plaque of appreciation to our guest speaker, 
It reads, Republic of the Philippines Department of Education, Deped Complex, Miralco Avenue, Pasig City. Plak of appreciation is hereby given to Attorney Josephine G. Maribuho in sincere gratitude for her invaluable support during the conduct of the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair or NSTF held in Tanza, Cavite, Philippines on August 31 to September 3, 2021, thereby contributing immeasurably to the success of the occasion. Given this third day of September 2021 in Tanza, Cavite, Philippines, signed Leonor Magtolis Briones, Secretary. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker, Attorney Josephine G. Maribuho. Salamat po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Yusek. This year's NSTF is launched via the microsite. Have you visited www.depednstf2021.com? This was designed by Waveplay. A leader in interactive event experiences in the Philippines, Waveplay Interactive creates innovative event engagements for top local and international brands. They introduce game-changing technologies that captivate guests on an all-immersive level from motion games, interactive displays, augmented reality, touch screens, premium photo and video booth to virtual and hybrid event microsites. And we believe that our participants had fun navigating the microsite just like the photo booth. Let's get to know more about Waveplay. Let's watch this video. Gokongwe Brothers Foundation is a family foundation that strives to make a last impact on education in the Philippines. Its core thrust is advancing STEM education, believing that this is the driving force toward sustainable national development. Let's have a quick look on their video. Pangarap kong maging isang successful na mechanical engineer. Pangarap ko din na masuklian yung mga nakatulong sa buhay ko. Pangarap ko pong makapagtapos ng pag-aaral upang matulungan ang aking pamilya. The Gokongwe Brothers Foundation was founded in 1992 from an initial endowment by uh, my father, John Gokongwe, and three of his brothers. Its objective is really to support the growth of educational opportunities for Filipinos. I seem to recall in the Philippines, there's not very much foundation work here being done. I worked and studied with my family and decided to put the Kokongwe Brothers Foundation by contributing shares of stock for me and my brothers to form the nucleus of the company. My father, due to various circumstances, including the Second World War and in the earlier death of his father, he was not able to complete uh, his university. You know? He's basically a high school graduate. But because of his innate curiosity and love for learning, he read a lot of uh, books, he read a lot of uh, magazines and articles. This helped him become a successful entrepreneur. He was able to pursue a master's education for himself, where he really found a lot of value in that. He saw that the difference that education made in his life, and he wanted to share that uh, opportunity with as many Filipinos as he could. Po si James Lembrano, 21 years old, pangalawa sa magkakapatid. Si Papa kinuha as a technician ng isang company sa Mindoro. Nagustuhan niya yung pamumuhay, nagkaroon ng business, then sinama niya na kami doon. So doon na kami lumaki. First year high school, namatay si Papa. 
heart enlargement. Ako, mindset ko noon, wala na kami yung pera. So, hindi ako makatapos ng pag-aaral. Nag-open yung GBF na mag-offer ng scholarship. Si tita ko, tinanong niya ako, James, gusto mong mag-aaral. Walang alinlangan na sinabi ko, sige po, gusto ko talaga mag-aaral. Nag-exam ako sa scholarship hanggang sa pumasa, hanggang sa nag-aaral na ako. Doon na ako nagsimula mag-grow. Doon na ako nakarealize kung paano mabuhay dito sa mundo ko. The Scholar Ni Juan program is a TESDA accredited program that provides underprivileged youth with a one-year scholarship for mechatronics and instrumentation, which means that they learn how to operate machines in a factory floor. And after they pass the TESDA exam, they are offered jobs in Universal Robina Corporation. Ang trabaho ko po ngayon is production operator. As a production operator, kailangan laging secure yung makina ko ng maayos na naiwasan yung trouble. Pangalawa, kailangan yung quality ng products laging nasisikyo at na hindi makakontaminate. Sobrang laki na naitulong sa akin ang trabaho dito sa Universal Robina Corporation Cavite Plants kasi nakatulong ako sa pamilya namin ng maayos gawa ng stable na yung trabaho ko so regular na ako dito. Our thrust for the foundation is STEM education, so science, technology, engineering, and math education. We believe that the path to progress for any nation is through industrialization, and we feel that through STEM programs, this is probably the best path forward. My name is Rosan Carmana. I'm 24 years old, and I'm the GBF, Regis Summit Petrochemical STEM Scholar. I came from a simple family living in the mountains of Lubo. Growing up in a less privileged community has not only offered financial but also academic challenges. But that helped me realize the value of education. Working here as JJ Summit Petrochemical Corporation has been a great experience. JJ Summit is providing different opportunities, tools, trainings, and resources that are all valuable for me to be equipped and ready on the task I'm assigned to. We recognize that uplifting education in the Philippines is, is not the job of one institution alone. It's, it's a partnership and our, our objective is really to work with uh, very credible and capable partners such as De La Salle for engineering and the Ateneo for management. All I wanted to do was graduate for my family. But I was studying my course, I realized that the theory had a lot of applications for my country. The Gokongui grant has helped me not only for me to be able to reach those resources financially, but it has also helped my work to be recognized. It's always been my plan to graduate with a master's degree. I want to pursue a career in applied mathematics. The GBF Next Gen Scholarship for Excellence assisted my parents financially in providing me a high quality education. We will continue with our focus on STEM education. Hopefully we're able to help a few thousand uh, Filipinos achieve education access that they may not have had. Gusto pong magpasalamat sa GBF STEM Scholarship for Excellence kasi po nabigyan po ako ng gantong klaseng oportunidad. Nagbukas po sila ng pintuan upang sa gayon makapag-aral po uli ako. GBF has helped me take that first step the moment that they granted me with the Next Gen Scholarship. Mission to empower the future through education. This is not just my legacy or the GBS legacy. This is our legacy.
All right, we now come to one of the most awaited parts of the program, the announcement of winners of CNC Kula Competition 2021. There were three stages in the judging process, the peer-to-peer -peer review, the popular vote, and the final stage, the evaluation and selection committee review. The Department of Education will provide certificate and cash prize to the winning entries. All the finalists will also be receiving certificate of participation. The panel of judges have decided to choose three best entries and will receive equal amount of prizes instead of ranking them from first place to third place. Each of these winning entries will receive 7,000 pesos cash prize. For the special awards, one winner by peer review and one winner by popular vote. Each winner will receive 3,000 pesos cash prize. And wait, there's more. The Gokongwei Brothers Foundation will also give prizes to the three best entries, not only for the winning student, but also, take note, to their respective schools. Each of these winning entries will receive another 7,000 pesos cash prize. And each of the winning schools they are enrolled in will also receive 7,000 pesos in kind. Thank you, DepEd and Gokongwei Brothers Foundation. To begin, we will now announce the winners of the special awards. The peer-to-peer -peer review was the first phase of judging. It's an educational experience and desires with good faith in providing an honest and sincere assessment of which aims at providing an honest and sincere assessment of the peers' entries. And this year's Cien Cicola winner by peer review goes to A novel is designed to direct and increase the velocity of any fluid flow. Region 2, title of entry, Ride to Moon, Convergent Divergent Nozzle. Name of creator, Cassandra Ortiz B. Gudao from Togegarao City Science High School. Congratulations, you will be receiving certificate and 3,000 pesos cash prize. Up next, the popular vote. This is the entry with the highest combined total of likes, shares, and positive reactions on the video's original post on NSTF's microsite. And this year's Cien Cicola winner by popular vote goes to... We love to cuddle our bunso and... From Region 11, title of entry, Herd Immunity, name of creator K.D. Ortega from Mariano Peralta National High School. Congratulations. Also, you will be receiving certificate and 3,000 pesos cash prize. At this point, may we call in Dr. Maribel G. Nonato, Academician, National Academy of Science and Technology, Vice Rector for Research and Innovation, University of Santo Tomas, and the Chairman of the Board of Judges to announce the winners. Take it away, ma'am. Good, good afternoon to all. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you clearly. Yes. Before I reveal the winners of the CNC Cola Competition 2021, let me walk you through how the nine Board of Judges decided on the winners. There were four criteria considered, namely engagement, illumination, creativity, and difficulty. The judges considered how you are able to engage your viewers with your video and get their interest to listen to you. They also considered how the viewers fully understand your explanation with the video providing support to your explanation. And of course, we considered how innovative you are in presenting the subject matter. And the, lastly, the difficulty of the subject matter that you selected for this video. All the nine judges were very impressed with the 48 video productions for the CN Cicula competition 2021. For us, you are all winners. I could see future science writers and science media newscasters 
who can communicate effectively emerging issues to the society. The nine judges unanimously agreed on the winners that were selected, which I'm going to announce in a little while. First, thank you very much also to DepEd for inviting us again to participate in this 2021 NSTF. Thank you to Director Andaya, and of course to DepEd team. Moving on, the announcement of winners of this video for CNC Kula competition 2021. In no particular order, As the pandemic rages on with 127 million cases as of March 31, it's increasingly clear that widespread vaccination is essential to help contain it. First, we have from Region 6, the video debunking the myth, how mRNA vaccines work. The name of creator, Junel O. Arellano, with the coach, Ed Eden Rufin. Once again, congratulations, Negros Occidental High School. Once upon a time, there was an insert. Hello, I'm a new intern. And her boss. Let's get you to work right away. Next, we have from Region 7, the video entitled, The Intern, Enzyme Crash Course, name of creator, Chloe Nicole L. Borja, coach, Brian C. Akar. Again, congratulations, Schools Division Office of Lapu-Lapu City. The compression of the fans would move in the same direction that you walk to. This is the same with the Higgs boson where the person who is significantly surrounded by interested people is like a particle, given a large mass by the field of fans. And of course, the last part, and not the least, definitely, we have from Region 6, the video Higgs Boson, name of creator, Jude Christian T. Noblesa. Three coaches, Jade Aro, Iman Ray Aguilar, and Rosemary Doronila. Congratulations, Sima Malaylan National High School. Congratulations to all the best three videos for the Cien Sikula competition 2021. Let's all give them a virtual round of applause. Thank you. Once again, Dr. Maribel G. Nonato, the Chairman of the Board of Judges. Congratulations to all the winners for emerging among the other participants. This is your day. Enjoy the sumptuous taste of fame and glory. On the other hand, we would also like to extend our appreciation to other participants whose success has been delayed. Mind you, success isn't just about bringing home the certificates and cash. It's about gaining experience. Up next, we shall now proceed to the awarding of flag of appreciation to our valued partners who, in one way or another, immensely contributed to the success of the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair. Allow me to read the citation. Republic of the Philippines Department of Education, Deped Complex, Meralco Avenue, Pasig City, Plaque of appreciation is hereby given to, in sincere gratitude of its distinguished and invaluable support during the conduct of the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair held
held in Tanza, Cavite, Philippines on August 31 to September 3, 2021, thereby contributing immeasurably to the prestige and success of the occasion, given this third day of September 2021 in Tanza, Cavite, Philippines. Signed, Leonor Magtolis Briones, Secretary. This plaque of appreciation is awarded to Embassy of the United States of America. United States Agency for International Development Network of ISAF Alumni Philippines, International Labor Organization, and Gokongwe Brothers Foundation. It is when we work in partnership that we achieve great things, not by doing it alone. It is only when everyone come together, work together that we become more willing to go beyond dreams and beyond theories to take action today and forever be catalyst of change. Please accept our heartfelt thanks and deepest gratitude to you, our dear valued partners. And now, may we listen to Director Jocelyn D. Arandaya, the Director of the Bureau of Curriculum Development, as she delivers her closing remarks. Let's give her a warm round of virtual applause. Good afternoon, maayo na hapon, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. The NSTF, or the National Science and Technology Fair, has now come to an end. It's a four-day journey. It is short, but more than that, it is meaningful, it's enthralling, it's thought provoking. In the four days of this virtual event, we were presented with the various researches, technologies and innovations in the field of STEM during the side talks and panel discussion, highlighting the benefits, challenges, importance, and ways to realize them. It's a humongous field, but compelling. From artificial intelligence, virtual reality, internet of things, big data analytics. We have a virtual glimpse of technologies from the sky to the sea and even to the galaxy. We were updated on space explorations, technologies for agriculture, healthcare, on, and on mitigating climate change. We were inspired by the journey of our scientists and inventors, men and women alike, and we recognize their great minds, their grit, their creativity and collaboration, and the vital role they are playing for the benefit of the humankind. They have explored solutions for food security, healthcare, environment, among others, all of which are geared towards sustainable development. This virtual national science and technology fair has taught us that knowledge and skills in science, technology, and math, engineering and mathematics has to be heightened with community engagement, industry partnership, and entrepreneurial minds as we generate new knowledge, create new and better products, and provide better solutions to pressing problems of our times through the multitude of researches, innovations, and inventions. This is not just about learning uh, about machines, but offering new ideas, the power of the information and knowledge era. This virtual NSTF has also encouraged us to not stop learning, but we have to pursue learning even more at this time of pandemic with the talent shown by our little Einsteins and Darwins in our classrooms. Who would have known that our kids could explain these STEM concepts in a clear and engaging manner through videos? It's STEM, communication and digital arts rolled into one. It's a learning pathway to foster critical thinking and creativity. We do have geniuses and it is our duty to hone, unleash the potentials and support the dreams of our young scientists and budding inventors. We live in a VUCA world. We can say that we are uncertain of what's ahead of us. Seemingly, of course, a 360 degree turn in the ways we do things because of the pandemic. On our road to recovery with COVID-19, 
our programs in the Department of Education, including NSTF, in one way or another, has the inspiring conviction to develop in us resilience and empathy. We thank everyone who have pulled their hearts, minds, and bodies for the conduct and the success of the first ever virtual NSTF. To our partners, the Gokongwei Brothers Foundation, headed by Executive Director Grace Colette, thank you very much. To USAID and all our other guest speakers, judges, moderators, facilitators, who have given their time, talent, and treasure to lay down a pathway in accelerating STEM, and STEM education through NSTF. To all our DepEd officials, teachers, and learners who participated in this event, and will of course be our channels and transporters of STEM in the field, our heartfelt gratitude goes to you all. To the National uh, Technical Working Group headed by both Anna and Lisa Chan and uh, Joseph Gutierrez, my salute for the innovation in delivering the NSTF in this virtual platform. There may have been humps along the way as it's part of the journey, but what matters most is that we are triumphant in holding this first ever virtual event. Let's be ready for more challenging tasks and programs ahead. I know that we are all up to the challenge. In one of the side talks in the NSTF, our speaker, Dr. Jim Sanchez shared this prayer. Oh God, please grant me a mind that is simple but full of wisdom, a heart that is firm but full of compassion, and heart and hands that are strong yet soft when touching others' lives. And we share that prayer. For 2022, we do not know yet if we will have it again virtually, or hopefully we can gather to participate in NSTF face-to-face. But we do hope that we'll be able to combat the threats of COVID-19 the soonest. Wherever we may be, I'm sure that it will be more exciting, inspiring, and STEMifying. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, our learners, don't, uh, especially to our learners, don't forget that the search for knowledge and new ways of seeing and doing things does not end with the NSTF. I therefore encourage you to one, change our educational landscape, one research at a time. Change your community, one innovation at a time. And change our country, one discovery at a time. Thank you very much, everyone, and mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you, Mom. Once again, Director Jocelyn D.R. Andaya of the Bureau of Curriculum Development. And this marks the end of the 2021 National Science and Technology Fair. As what Hilary Dayan Andales, the 2017 Breakthrough Junior Challenge winner said yesterday, believe in yourself and dream your big dreams. This is George Emmanuel Martin from Quirino High School, SDO Quezon City. See you all next year and let the world know that you are a product of public schools quality education Thank you and mabuhay. As the pandemic rages on with one Recording stopped.